Ciao. Big bucks. I'm going stop. He got away. Oh. <laughs> has their Kindle Unlimited thing. Huh? Which is not for everything, though. That's the problem. And I assume that, that that's cool. like... Yeah, like a book service? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Although I can't read on my iPad. First of all, it's too bright. And then second, you know, I'm on my iPad. I might as well be playing Mahjong. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Christensen is here with us, everybody. Adam Christensen, he, of course, hosted the MacCast. He is a podcast pioneer. I'll tell you what, though. He is a, he is a, he's a, a veteran when it comes to spinning the wheel of stuff. I don't remember. Is this your second time or third time? I feel like this might only be your this second be time. This my third time. Your third time? Really? I need to come up with a new feature. Anyway, for people who don't remember, and I would imagine most people do, I found a decision maker app in the App Store. It's called... Um, daily decision wheel if memory serves cost about five bucks and honestly probably the best five bucks i've ever spent in the app store because we've been playing this game for months now it's generated so much content yeah there you go (laughs) i put i put a bunch of topics on the wheel uh we spin the wheel i throw whatever it lands on to adam christensen and conversation ensues adam or i just panic and clam up (laughs) or you panic and say pass which i don't think you can do uh are you ready sir to spin the wheel of stuff Sure. No whammies. What was the first concert you chose to go to? People have heard this before. The first concert that I remember was uh, John Denver, Starland vocal band, open for them, or open for him, rather. And and Mm -hmm. when I say I remember it, I was like four or five years old. So, like, I remember going and I have, like, this one, like, idea of, like, a shot of the stage in my head, but I don't really remember it. The first one I chose to go to was Billy Joel. So. Good can, choice. Well, it was it was not bad. Yeah, it was, a, it was actually a great show. It was a great show. I still remember yeah, that. Yeah. So, so, that was the first one I chose to go to. What was the first concert you chose to go to? Boingo, Boingo, Irvine Spectrum, Halloween. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Wow. When was this? Yeah. Oh, uh, probably early 90s. No, you would have been. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was pretty late. All right. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Well, no, that's cool. I mean, that's yeah. great. I mean, I didn't, honestly. I didn't go to many concerts, and I actually, to be honest, I only went to one concert in high school, and it wasn't one that I went to by choice. It was a good one. Okay. Well, but, now, now I got to know. It was the Eagles. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah, but I was basically um, designated driver for a bunch of drunk people. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's not quite as much fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, but you chose to go to Oingo Boingo. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely in college. I remember that. So it had to be past 89, which is when I graduated high school. So it was probably 90, 91, something oh, okay. like that. Oh, far out. It was an awesome concert, though. I'll bet. Yeah, I um, yeah, I see. I grew up in Music City, USA. So, I mean, I didn't go to every show that I wanted to, and certainly there were tons of concerts that I missed. But I don't know. I don't think I could have gotten that late. And yeah, I wasn't a show. huge music guy. Um, you know, but like the the other concert that I went to that is my favorite ever was the Piano Man tour. When was Billy that? Joel Elton John in San Diego. Oh um, wow! Okay. Oh. I don't yeah. remember the year. Yeah, I do know that. I have I have the the concert t shirt that I've never worn. <laughs> nice. It's like brand new. It's my like prized possession. I have the uh, concert t shirt actually from my Billy Joel concert, um, mm-hmm. but I was in the eighth grade. It 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 doesn't fit. <laughs> Are you ready to spin again, sir? Spin again. I'll tell you the concert really quickly, and we have another topic I know, but I'll tell you the concert I'm most happy that I got to see. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with a gentleman named John Hartford? No. So he, I guess you would say, was a country artist, although in the early to mid-70s, he might have been more like prog rock, I'm not sure, because I've, I've read about some of the stuff that he did from the early to mid-70s, which sounds a bit more... 
Well, it's like the Eagles. Like I worked at a country station and they had some Eagles songs there because they considered some of the Eagles stuff country. So I would say that's mm-hmm. probably where John Hartford lived in the early 70s was sort of between rock and country. He became sort of like maybe more like Americana or whatever. But he wrote songs oh, okay. like uh, like he wrote Gentle on My Mind, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which uh, was, I think, made famous by uh, a guy who did Rhinestone Cowboy, Glenn. Well, anyway. He, he wrote a bunch of songs that people know, but then he performed by himself. And he did this like little festival in downtown Nashville one time. And I made a friend of mine go. And we were seriously maybe like 50 people might have shown up for it, which is, which is tragic to me because he was such an amazing artist. And it was such an intimate setting at the same time. I'm glad that 50 people or less showed up because I can't tell you how close I got. And it was just such a... It was such a wonderful, uh, wonderful moment. But we move on. What I wanted to be. You're a family man. You're a, you're a, uh, you're a developer. You're a podcaster. Yeah. Uh, were all of those things what you always wanted to be? I'm sure when you were eight, you <laughs> thought, I'm going to be a podcaster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did you want to be when you grew up, when you were far from growing up? Uh, I want to be a cartoonist. Nice. Yeah. Like a daily, like you know, in the newspaper yeah, or three, you know, three, four panel (laughs) comic strip cartoonist. Tell me about the character you made because I know you made one because I wanted to be a cartoonist (laughs) as well. And I had a character and he was horrible. I don't know if I ever actually developed a character to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I ever put anything ever together. It was just one of those aspirations. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a huge fan of Garfield at the time. Okay. So I think I wanted to be like John Davis, although I don't know if I'd want to be now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know anything about him, honestly. Don't tell me. Don't tell me because <laughs> I, I have happy memories of Garfield and I'm fine being that. Yeah. yeah. He's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell him I said, hey, when you talk to him. <laughs> so, I mean, um, but you actually, because correct me if I'm wrong, you did the logo for the Mac, for, for Matcast, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So what ended up happening, you know, that was sort of like the the dream. And mm-hmm. then you start, you know, getting ready for college and you're doing the research and you're like, uh, yeah, maybe that's going to be kind of a hard road to <laughs> hole. And, oh, and then like, you know, I wanted to be an illustrator at one point. Basically, I wanted to be a, an artist. And then um, I kind of discovered graphic arts and I'm like, oh, that's probably more like uh, marketable. It's probably something that has more of career opportunity for me. So that's yeah. kind of the direction that I moved in. So I ended up doing graphic arts and actually, uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of careers that are going places in the, in the age of digital, um, printing was my degree. I'm sorry. What was, uh, printing, oh, like printing. Ink on paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I did, uh, I, I did a, I did a, uh, my specialty in college was, um, magazine and book design which as it turns out translates very well into web which is sort of how sure. i became a web developer so it, it okay. all worked out yeah that's pretty cool uh personally i come from a long line of people who make horrible career decisions which is how i decided to go into radio <laughs> <laughs> and how i ended up here uh, do you want to try it one more time sir yeah go for it got no complaints by the way no no all works out yeah, quite happy with how it went. But yes, I went into radio actually right around the time of deregulation. And one of my teachers was like, yeah, you guys picked a great time to come in because you're going to be working for one of three companies, assuming you get a job in radio, which most of you won't. <laughs> like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, can I have my money back? Uh, tell me a toy story. The story that I uh, that I uh, brought up last time, and this will just give you an idea, and I hate to tell the story again, but it just give you kind of an idea. Uh, I had a Stretch Armstrong. One day I found out that my Stretch Armstrong had a hole in it. Years later, I found out my cousin had poked the hole in the Stretch Armstrong. That is a toy story. Now, you may have a better toy story than that. It may be, you know, I never thought I would get this, and I did. It may be tragic. I was, you know, on a trip to the Grand Canyon and it fell in. Yeah. yeah. Tell me a toy story. I, I have a couple. I feel like I might have told you one of these already. Hmm. Because Toy Story is a relatively Did new I tell topic, you about the so. ruined the the ruined Christmas? You did, but not 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 in the uh, 
not in the uh, context of a Toy Story. The, the Star Wars Death Star. Yeah, yeah, you did tell me about that. Yes, but not. Yeah, yeah. so the, that was the. I mean, that would be a Toy Story. But I think I, I've told you that one already. Basically, my brother and I found our yeah. up in the attic, like. For yeah. some reason, there was a, the, the Star Wars Death Star, which was like the toy we wanted for for forever. Yeah, you know the playset with the with the trash compactor monster and all that stuff. And yeah, we just opened it up and played for it because we didn't, played with it because we didn't understand like why it was up in the attic. And then <laughs> my parents are like, "You're not having Christmas," and we're like, "What's going on? We don't understand." Oh, that's terrible. Okay, you said you have another so Toy Story. They, because, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, another another Star Wars Toy Story. Oh, okay. Like, um, so I had this friend. Uh, it was a family friend, this kid, Philip or whatever. And, and we'd go like backpacking and stuff with their family from time to time. And um, I was over there one time and we were playing Star Wars with our Star Wars figures and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, I get home and um, I don't have my favorite Star Wars toy, my Jawa. Hmm. And uh, it turned out Philip had stolen my uh, my Jawa. <laughs> there was a whole controversy. My dad had to get involved. We had to go back there and to give me back my Jawa and apologize. But yeah, yeah. Golly. Stolen Jawas. Yeah, that's that's pretty hardcore. I, although, <laughs> honestly, I'm stuck on how was the Jawa your favorite? I don't know. I like the Jawas. All right. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, you didn't. You, you got something against Jawas? No, no. But Boba Fett was my favorite. Boba Fett went <laughs> with me everywhere I went. Like, I remember flying Boba Fett around Sears because I had to go to Sears with my mom. But Sears was, was great. But that was, like, fantastic because that all kinds of stuff for Boba Fett to fly around and land on, you know? Yeah. They, were at, they were like an Apple partner in the early days. That's where you could go buy an Apple, too. Sears. <laughs> I did, I did not, I did not remember that. Okay. Well, uh, I have no parting gifts for you, um, except for uh, my sincere and, and undying love for Jawas and you know whichever other characters uh, were your favorite. Uh, Adam Christensen, I want to thank you so much uh, for spending the week with us, and of course, uh, thank you very much for spinning the wheel of stuff. <laughs>